Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to walk you through the process that I go through after a wedding um, for importing photos. So basically, once I get back to the studio, this is the same process I go through for every shoot. Um, I'll be talking about it in the context of weddings though. It's gonna be kind of a short video today, uh, but hopefully you watch it and will either feel affirmed for <laughs> doing something that somebody else does too, uh, whether right or wrong, or you know maybe take something from my workflow, bits and pieces from mine, and incorporate it into yours. Be sure to leave comments below and share what you guys do for your importing workflow after a shoot. Because I'd love to hear that, and maybe there's something that you guys are doing that I'm not doing that I can do. So yeah, just kind of having that conversation and sharing uh, and talking about these kind of things. I think it's a really good thing. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, Let's get started. Alrighty, so the first thing I do is take the cards out of the camera and pop them into this Miracle Box machine. So this is the Lexar workstation, and what's pretty rad about it is you can put up to four cards in here at a time, which is great because I can put my two in here, and then usually whoever I'm shooting with as uh, a second shooter will use two cards as well. Those can go in the bottom two slots, and I can import everything at once. I would highly recommend getting this thing if you're looking to uh, save a little bit of time. And what's also cool about it is that there is Thunderbolt connection. I'm not sure if um, in the back there, I'm not sure if you guys are Mac users or not. I am, and Thunderbolt is wonderful. Oh, and one last thing uh, before I stop talking about this. These are, let's see if we can get, so these are removable modules. Um, this one and these three are for SD cards, but they make, let's see if I can get it. They also make them for CF and um, other other uh, storage options like micro SD and USB. And you just pop it in there whenever you have a CF card to import. Some of the people I shoot with have CF cards too. So having that interchangeability is super handy. Okay guys, so the other thing that I uh, use for every shoot is this lacy rugged portable hard drive. It is a Thunderbolt 2 connector. You know how I love that Thunderbolt. The cord just wraps around and sits inside the uh, super squishy silicone sleeve to protect it against bumps and that kind of thing. And what I keep on here is two things. One, a copy of all of the JPEGs I've ever delivered to anyone, uh, just to make sure nothing happens to them and I always have a copy in addition to the ones that are here at the office. And um, the other thing that I keep on here that's more applicable to this video are copies of raw photos for every wedding or shoot that hasn't been delivered yet. The reason why I do that is just in case, you know, something happens to the office, say it burns down, catches on fire, something like that, and the hard drives here that also have the raw files are lost, I at least have this with me. So anyways, yep, this thing is super great. Highly recommend it. I'll link everything in the description down below too, so you know where to find them. All right guys, so what we have going on here are the two SD cards that we plugged into the Lexar Work Hub and the Lacey Thunderbolt disc that we're gonna use as our backup, um, as our backup storage hard drive. First thing we're gonna wanna do is hold down the Alt Option key if this is a Mac. And again, hey, sorry PC users, I know that all of this can be done, all of what I'm gonna show you guys um, though it's very Mac specific, can be done on a PC. I just don't know how to do it. It's been a long time since I've worked in Windows, but I think everyone can still kind of benefit from the basic workflow that we'll chat about here. All right, Mac users, go ahead and hold down the Alt Option key while simultaneously clicking the Lightroom icon down below here in the toolbar or the app bar. We're gonna wanna create a new catalog now, I create a new Lightroom catalog for every shoot I do. And I know some people who have one big Lightroom catalog that they prefer to put all their shoots in. 
For a bunch of reasons that I'll talk about in future videos, I would highly recommend making a new catalog for each shoot. I'm gonna go ahead and name this. I name all of my Lightroom catalogs after the bride's last name, after the bride's maiden name. Anything that I do, contract, agreement, everything is referenced off of the bride's maiden name. Uh, but I'd be super curious to know what you guys do. What do you name your uh, Lightroom catalogs after? Um, go ahead and drop those in the comments below. I might actually be able to, to pick up a tip or two from you guys. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in the bride's maiden name here. And then I'm gonna, I use tags, OS X, I forget which version started incorporating tags, but I find them super useful. Um, okay, so tag, we're gonna do step one, not started. We wanna make sure, you guys, this is really important, make sure that you put it here on the hard drive where all of your shoots sit, okay? So in my case, it's Pegasus 3. I'm gonna make sure it's there. I'm gonna push create. And Lightroom is gonna make a brand new catalog that's empty and ready for us to import those, uh, those photos into. All right, so here we are with our empty catalog. I'm gonna to go to library mode. We're gonna go ahead and import here. Uh, you can see here in the left um, that we have the two SD cards that are popped in there. If we had four, it would be four here. For those of you who uh, aren't using the Lexar Work Hub and you just put the SD card straight into your computer, you will just have one showing up here, okay? And if you just had one, you would just go ahead and select all the photos you wanna import and import. This, this step that I'm about to do is specific only to the, uh, the Lexar Work Hub users. So to get multiple SD cards to import at the same time, you're gonna have to do um, a little trick. Go ahead and go down here to the file section where all of your external hard drives and, and internal hard drives too are connected. Um, go to, my SD cards are named EOS Digital. I shoot with Canon. I think Canon's, um, all Canon cards are, are named that way. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and select the folder that the camera stores the RAWs in. In my case, it's this DCIM folder. If we actually kind of work through it, you can kind of see Right here, here's all the RAWs. So they're stored in that DCIM folder. What I'm gonna do, so I can get both importing at the same time, because that's really the benefit of this work hub, is to avoid having to waste time monitoring the progress of the import and then swapping out cards to start a new import. So we're gonna import them at the same time, and how we do that is select the DCIM card, hold down the command key and select the DCIM card of the other SD card, if you had four, you'd do the same process for all four. You'd have four of these selected. We have two, so we have two. And again, if you're shooting, or if you're using just an SD card plugged directly into the computer, just one, you can skip this section down here and just click your uh, SD card up here. Cool? So you can see here that no photos are found, and that's because we haven't told Lightroom to look for photos in the subfolders. So we're gonna go ahead and click Include Subfolders. And now here are all of the photos from the two cards combined. So you guys, we are here on the left-hand uh, column. We're done with this. We're gonna move to the middle. The middle here, we're gonna be sure to copy, okay? Copying photos takes them from the original location and adds them to the catalog, but it doesn't do anything to the original location. We want these to stay on the SD card in case anything happens with the import, we can always go back to the original source and figure out what happened or import again. We just wanna copy. And we're gonna come over here to the right-hand column. Okay, so we did left, we did middle, we're doing right. And we are gonna to want to, for the build previews, I just do standard. Eventually previews will need to be built in Lightroom. It just, you're choosing right now which size previews you want Lightroom to generate. Uh, I don't build smart previews, it just takes too much time. Usually after a wedding, it's super late. I really just wanna go home. I don't usually go home until the import process is complete, just so that I know everything happens okay. Uh, and all the photos are safe. And so I can take this, this lacy hard drive home that I showed you guys earlier, because uh, I can't do that while it's importing because it's importing to it. So go ahead and check this make a second copy too. And this is where that, that orange lacy hard drive comes into play. I have, I'm telling Lightroom to make a second copy of all of these RAWs that I'm importing and put them on that hard drive there. So let's go ahead and click there. That'll take us to the finder window where we will drill down to the location that we want Lightroom to put those du those second copies, the backup copies. I'm gonna go ahead and select that Lacey hard drive. I have a folder here that's called raw backups and I name the raw backups folder also after the bride's maiden name. So um, I'm gonna go to new folder. I'm gonna name this folder Greg, create. 
So I have this folder here is where I'm telling Lightroom to put the raw, the second copy of the raws, okay? Choose. And then add to collection, I don't use, and the reason why I don't use add to collection is because I have one catalog for each client. If this is really, this is really handy if you had one Lightroom catalog for all of your shoots and you wanted to add it to a collection that's specifically named for this shoot. It doesn't really apply here, so I leave that unchecked. I don't rename files. Um, I'd be curious if you guys do what you rename them to. Uh, develop settings, so this is applied during import. For develop settings, the only develop setting that I, that I have here is lens correction. It's a um, user preset that I created that basically is just a copy of what Lightroom does when you tell it to correct for lens distortion. You don't have to have anything here though because you could easily do it afterwards. It's just easy. It makes no difference and it makes no difference whether it's done after or before so I might as well just do it before so I don't have to do it after. Metadata, I don't do anything but you can do, if I do metadata I usually do it on export but you can do it on import. Keywords, this is super useful if you have um, one Lightroom catalog that you import everything to. Again, since I do a new Lightroom catalog for each client, uh, I leave this blank because it's super easy to find what I'm looking for. I don't need keywords to help me. And then, okay, guys, this destination section right here is by far the most important thing you will do importing. This is where, this is where things are won or lost. So what you need to make sure you do is import these RAWs. Remember, you're telling Lightroom where to import RAWs to. You need to make sure that you import these RAWs to the same folder that the Lightroom catalog is in. So I named this folder after the bride's last name, Greg, okay? And I put that folder on that Pegasus 3 hard drive that has all of my shoots. I need these RAWs to go to the same folder. The reason why is let's say this Lightroom catalog, it exists in the Greg folder on Pegasus 3, okay? If the RAWs are somewhere else and something happened to that folder that the RAWs were in, that, mean, that would mean all of the RAWs that are attached to these JPEGs are lost. And finding them can be tricky, if not impossible, because they may have been accidentally deleted. So this is, this is a critical step. This destination pane right here lists all of your hard drives and uh, external devices. So you can even see here the SD cards are sitting there. What I'm gonna do is go to Pegasus 3 because that's where the Greg folder lives. I'm gonna find it, Greg. You can see here too that the arrow isn't highlighted and that's because it's an empty folder. But anyways, click that and it's going to put them in the Greg folder in um, a 2016 folder and then the date that it's imported so it's going to make like a little hierarchy automatically a little directory automatically and that's great and import cool guys so it looks like everything imported uh, properly and now we're just going to go ahead and confirm that that's the case the first thing I do here is take note of the all photographs count which is 2011 so I'm gonna go here to Finder. I'm gonna to go to the folder on the SD cards where all the RAWs are stored. Just do a quick bit of math here. So 1163, 1163. And go to the second card. Select all, 1048. 1048 is 2211. What I did is I, I looked at how many photos were imported into Lightroom. And then I went to the SD cards and did a quick, just did a quick highlight all count uh, down, oops, down here. Do you see at the bottom of my finder screen? Let me make this small. Right here at the bottom of my finder screen, I have like a count of how many items are in a folder. So I just did a real quick, real quick addition there to get 2211. And I can go over here and confirm the 2211 imported. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to go to the folder that they're stored in. So go to Greg, 2016 is where they're, they're stored. You can see them all here. So I'll just click on that folder, do Command I, and I see here that it's 60.23 gigabytes. And then I'm gonna go to US Digital here. Both of them. I can do the same thing, Command I, there, Command-I here, 
I can add these two up, 28.4 plus 31.83 is, you can see here, 60.23 and 60.23. So this here is the folder that the Lightroom catalog has them stored in. And these are the two folders from the SD cards. And the sum of these two equal the total of this. I don't always do this precise of a cross check. Something that you can do is just a quick reasonableness check. If you know that you shot, if you filled up, you know, almost two 32 gigabyte cards, importing 60.23 gigabytes probably got them all. And I'd be more concerned if, if when you go to the folder here, that this was something like, you know, one gigabyte or something something like that you know that you shot more than one gig <laughs> so that should be concerning if it if it is indeed one so i would just do just take a little bit of extra time just like an extra minute or two just to double check some things like file size or or the number of photos they imported to just just cross check and make sure you got stuff sent to the right place that's all we do for import then the last step is i just go to catalog settings I back up the catalog every time Lightroom exits. The default is once a week. I do every time Lightroom exits. Close that. Go ahead and quit. Again, I'm going to go over more of my backup plan in a separate video, but uh, I'll just go ahead and show you what I do real quick right now. The backup folder, it's automatically set to just put it inside the same folder that the Lightroom catalog is in. That, um, back up for one second, <laughs> pun. Uh, what this is doing is it's, it's backing up only the Lightroom settings. So it's only backing up like whatever edits I make, not the RAWs or anything like that. This is only backing up the catalog settings. I hope that's clear. So it's a super, super small file size and all it's doing is just preserving your edits in case you lose, in case something happens to the Lightroom catalog, you don't lose work. It's not, it's not saving you from losing photos, it's saving you from losing work. Does that make sense? Ask me in the comments below if you want me to explain that a little bit more and I can do just a real quick follow-up video. Okay, so I, I want to, if we think about the Lightroom catalog being corrupted or lost somehow, I want this, this backup to be somewhere where that Lightroom catalog is not. So what I do is I just choose to put it in a Dropbox folder called Lightroom Backups and here's all of my Lightroom Backups for, I don't know, since December. Every time I close a catalog, it will store a copy of the catalog here. So just click, I click that. So it's gonna store a copy, a backup copy of the Lightroom catalog in Dropbox. That way if the office burns down, it doesn't matter because I have a copy of the RAWs with me on the Lacey hard drive and I have a copy of the Lightroom catalog on Dropbox. So I'm pretty good to go in case disaster strikes. Well, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope that was helpful. If you want me to do more videos like these, be sure to like the video and subscribe. And if you have more questions, as always, drop them in the comments section below. I'll be sure to go ahead and answer those, and that way other people who might have the same question can benefit from, um, benefit from you asking it and me answering it. So anyways, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.